And good evening uh, for anyone here that wasn't here at uh, 3 o'clock. As Terry mentioned, my name's uh, Bob Gretz. I'm a senior air safety investigator with the National Transportation Safety Board Office of Aviation Safety. I'm, I'm based out of here in New Jersey and uh, received notification from the FAA about uh, 1030 that a, uh, a plane had uh, crashed around 10 a.m. on uh, Route 287 at, at exit 34. Uh, responded immediately and met with uh, FAA and various local uh, state agencies. Um, from the last press briefing at 3 o'clock, we basically continued with our number one goal today was to get the, uh, uh, the wreckage that was physically on the highway documented to get that off the highway. Um, and just to update you on, on what's happened uh, since, the, uh, since the 3 o'clock briefing, uh, the wreckage recovery has gone a little slower than we had anticipated. Uh, part of that was due to the darkness. Uh, the recovery company didn't feel it was safe to have their folks working on the side of the highway or in the highway being at night, and, um, and I agree with them. So I, they suspended uh, recovery operations about 6 p.m. Um, and plan to resume at 9.30 a.m. tomorrow after the morning rush hour so that it doesn't impact the morning rush hour. And I believe the, uh, by suspending at 6 p.m., we were able to open up, I believe, all lanes of both the, the northbound and the, the southbound um, uh, highway. The, um, so the recovery schedule is to basically resume tomorrow at 9.30, be done before the uh, evening rush hour, and as I mentioned earlier, to be transported to... Uh, uh, Delaware for long-term storage where we can go look at it in a more safe controlled environment than trying to work on the side of a highway um, and as far as NTSB presence we sort of will, will follow the wreckage uh, we'll be here obviously tomorrow on scene uh, until the pieces are picked up and then we'll probably follow it to Delaware as well um, there's an NTS as I mentioned in the earlier briefing there's an NTSB team of about eight people uh, four or five are here on scene uh, one is uh, going to Teterboro to, to, do, to look into some air traffic control information, and a couple are working it from D.C. looking into uh, weather and radar data and so forth. So as far as the on-scene activities, that's continuing, but then there's also operations going on in other parts of the country. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to follow up a question that I had uh, in the earlier briefing that I just had, didn't have time to look up the information on my computer was someone was asking about the plane. Uh, it's a 2005 uh, I didn't have the year, uh, but it's a, a Cicada, uh, which is a French company, a TBM 700, uh, powered by a Pratt & Whitney Canada uh, turboprop engine. It's a six-seater, uh, high-performance, uh, single-engine turboprop airplane. And uh, that's really the update that I have. I'm just going to open it up to questions. Do you, Would you just, are you holding the wreckage here locally until you take it to Delaware anywhere? Uh, yes. With, with, it's, some of it's already on the trucks. And uh, some of the local DPW yards uh, lent us their secure yards for the night so they could park the trucks there. Uh, the remainder of the wreckage is in the median, and uh, there's, uh, the New Jersey State Police has been kind enough to put a trooper on it uh, for the night uh, just to kind of guard it and make sure no one gets in there and gets hurt or anything like that. Would you describe this as sort of a puzzle that you have to put together, and how difficult is it, given the debris field and how many pieces you've got to put together, to being able to come up with an answer of saying this is what happened? Uh, that's a good question. Um, typically, that's what we'll do in, in a, a breakup situation like this where you have a wreckage scattered over um, about a half mile. Uh, the, the one thing that helps the investigation is that the wreckage did not burn, so we still have wreckage to pick up. Uh, but that is the goal, is to work with the recovery company and the insurance company uh, today and tomorrow, gather up those pieces, and bring it to a, a secure hangar in Delaware, and then lay it out. Uh, and not actually put the pieces back together, but lay them out in the order that they would be on an airplane. And uh, that's that's pretty good standard process for the NTSB in, in a case where the wreckage is spread over a half mile. Are you aware of any communications with the, or the air traffic control? As I mentioned, I, you may not have been here earlier, as I mentioned in the 3 o'clock briefing, what I've heard third hand from the FAA, I haven't listened to the tapes myself yet, I've been out on the highway all day, um, that uh, 14 minutes into the flight out of Teterboro, uh, there was a conversation between the uh, pilot and the controller about icing. It seemed to be a routine conversation in, in the effect that it was not a distress call or anything like that. There was some conversation about icing and the plane dropped off radar. Have you been able to tell or do you know where 
the victims were situated in the plane? Can, can we say that? I do not. Not at this point. That's something I would defer to the medical examiner. Uh, it was a high energy impact. And uh, as I mentioned in the earlier briefing, uh, the, the medical examiner will release names when they have a positive ID. At this time, we were told uh, uh, two male adults, one female adult, two children, and a dog. How long between the uh, conversation they had with the controller and when the plane lost radar? That's, a, that's something we really want to look into. Um, as I mentioned in the earlier briefing, that's going to take us a few days because we have to get a, a timeline trans transcript from the FAA, from air traffic control, and match it up with the timeline of the radar data. Until we do that, until I see that, I don't know time-wise how much transpired. Can you say or seconds? Both, or both. Yeah, that's a good question. So we don't know how long exactly yeah. the flight was in the air. Correct. I mean, I know it was 14 minutes into a flight, but I don't know from the first time the discussion of ice came up to when the airplane came down, I don't know if that's seconds or minutes or I just don't have a timeline to marry up right now. Did they lose, uh, they, they lost touch with them during that conversation? That yes, I believe that there was the conversation about ice and then um, radio and radar contact was lost by air traffic control. During that conversation? Was it during? Yeah, was it? No, it was after the conversation. There was a conversation yes. about ice and then there was no further transmissions. After it dropped off radar, how many attempts did the tower make to try to reestablish contact with the plane? I don't know. Typically they make several, but I don't know in this case. And I won't know that until I have that transcript that I was mentioning that would have the timelines. Is there any other explanation for after that? Because I've heard the conversation. It sounded very normal, no, no stress or any kind of a problem being indicated. For something like that to seem so routine and then to have no contact at all and have the plane spiral out of control. It, it, a lot of possibilities there? It is a mystery. There are a lot of possibilities. And like as I mentioned earlier today, I mean, this is day one of an investigation that usually runs six to 12 months. I mean, that's definitely one area we'll be looking into. But of course, we'll be looking into uh, the maintenance of the aircraft, um, the, the pilot uh, overall experience, recent experience, and also the weather, uh, not just uh, icing forecasts, but, but winds, reports from other pilots in the area, reports from controllers that were working planes that day. I mean, that, that's kind of a standard thing that we look into in, in, in every crash. Have you found a GPS unit? Um, we have found, the airplane has a, a panel mounted one and a handheld one. Uh, we found a handheld one, we're still looking for the panel mounted one. But as I mentioned in the earlier uh, press conference, uh, non-volatile memory is, is one of the, the key things that we want to find. And although this plane doesn't have black boxes per se, uh, a GPS or an engine monitor or a collision avoidance system, uh, those uh, newer avionics might have some, some chips that if we can recover, we can get some data out of that. So we're, we're hoping that we, so we do. A handheld's a good, a good start. If it was turned on, if, if someone has a handheld and a panel mount, they may use the panel mount and not use the handheld. Do you know the age of the children yet? I do not, no. Can we talk, about, can we talk about the pilot and his experience? As I mentioned earlier, I don't know. I um, Off the flight plan, I was given a name this morning, but that hasn't even been positively identified by the medical examiner. And I've been out on the highway all day. I haven't even had a chance to obtain any pilot records or anything like that. So we don't know the sexes of the children? I'm sorry? We don't know the sexes of the children? They haven't been confirmed by me. No, they, they, I was told two children. We saw a pretty big piece of debris in a tree nearby. How important is it to recover all of that for your purposes? That's the one piece remaining that uh, is not in the in the immediate highway area. Um, the uh, and I actually drove out to that residence to get the pieces that were on the ground uh, with the recovery company. There's a plan tomorrow to hire uh, a tree company to cut cut that down. Can you, can you talk a, a little bit about whether you can learn anything from from that? Does does that mean that the plane was falling apart, or can you not tell anything at all until you get it down and look at it? Yeah, I, yeah that's it. We have to get it down and look at it. Um, it, it you know, we want to make sure, it, did it hit the ground and then break apart, or did it break apart and hit the ground? It, there's, you know, there's different scenarios, and we want to make sure we have all, all the pieces and put them together and make sure we get it right. Can you spell the name of the company question. in Delaware again? I'm sorry? Can you spell the name of the company in Delaware again? A-N-G, L-I-N, Anglin Aircraft Recovery. I'm There's sorry, one last question. There's debris right now. I'm sorry? So some of it's in the medium, but can you give us a little more specifics about you know, how you were able to get it out so quickly? Is that in fact impacts the investigation or where it all is right now? Uh, I would say about 30, 40 percent of it is on the truck. And the other 60 to 70 percent is uh, in and around the median. Um, they basically, in, a, in an effort to open the highway, they basically went for the pieces on the highway first and sort of documented them and then pushed them to the sides and then started putting them on the truck. As they did that, 
night fell and the, and the recovery company with these big trucks just didn't feel safe um, being out on the road, so they're going to resume tomorrow at 9.30. Do you think that to affect traffic patterns in that area? Will people be slowing down? Or? Tonight, there's a trooper there. The lanes are open and there's a trooper there, so I don't, with the trooper there, I doubt there's going to be many people that are going to stop their car and get out and get out and look. Thank you very much.